What is up, rockers of the Rock Nation? And, yeah, Raw Review for 11 17 14, aka this week's Raw. The last Raw before Survivor Series. But anyway, of course, with special guest host Grumpy Cat. Yeah, I don't know, don't ask. But yeah, before I say anything though, I will say this Raw was actually. For the Authority Cena storyline, was actually a pretty damn good role for that over the past three, if I recall right, that we've been seeing. And overall, I actually didn't enjoy this role pretty much just for that, really. And the matches this time around, some of them weren't too bad. At least I didn't give them that poor rating, other than a few. But yeah. But. Starting off, but yeah, I don't even know what I'm saying right now, so yeah, but oh yeah, by the way, this Saturday before the Saturday, this Saturday, of course, before Survivor Series, I'll hopefully be at you guys with a prediction video for Survivor Series, and hopefully that night, and if not that night, that Monday night, I'll be with a review video and a result video for it. But yeah, that really depends, as, as I might say later on in the week with, with my Walking Dead video. The Walking Dead it will be on that night as well, so I don't exactly know how I'm going to balance that out for you guys. But yeah, hopefully I can and I can give you guys both videos for that week. But yeah, like I said, Survivor Series this Sunday, so on with my review. But here we have the first match tonight, Luke Harper versus Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. In this match, despite Ziggler's, but despite Ziggler being in poor condition at this point and before the match started, he was in poor condition because he did get beat down. And I actually have this right down the pre-match attack on Ziggler. Even with that pre-match attack, he was still it still shows how resilient he is, especially him be, being able to come back and make counter where it mattered during the match. And, of course, him still being able to stay in the match for the most part. But, yeah. Overall, this match was actually a really good match tonight for an opening match of the night. As sometimes it might happen, sometimes it might not happen. Luke Harper. I pretty much like Luke Harper for the Wyatt family. I like Ziggler, both people. And But, overall, Luke Harper did best... Dolph because of the pre I, I blame the pre-match attack and overall the Luke Harper is now officially in a crown championship with the W on his record against Ziggler overall like I said this match is actually pretty damn good I gave it a 4.5 but here's the thing though too now that the US and Intercontinental Championships are within the authority what's going to happen so yeah and from yeah pretty much and after this match, of course, with the curb stomp stuff like that, I was thinking Ziggler wasn't going to be able to compete either. So, yeah. But he is, surprisingly. But though we had the next match of the night, Adam Rose versus Tyson Kidd. Now, don't get me wrong here. I like both competitors. Adam Rose, a lot more than Kidd. That's because Kidd, he might be part of the Hart Dynasty. Or, yeah, I mean, you guys know what I'm saying. Overall, Tyson Kidd was never one of my favorite guys, but... Or... Yeah, but anyway. Really, this match is really not much to talk about. Other than what I liked the most was this new aggression coming from Adam Rose. And the, and really, I kind of like Adam Rose's this aggression. Yes, he might be turning heel, but as long as he still parties and stuff like that, hell, I'll enjoy it. And, of course, the bunny, bunny full of... Uh, I can't speak, but of course, the bunny flare with Tally was actually funny as well. So, yeah. And overall, though, I gotta admit, though, Kid 2 himself is being, is, has became impressive lately. At least to me, because I'm not that big fan of him, and I probably never will be that big fan of Kid. But hey, he's still a pretty good competitor, so I gave that. But overall, Tyson Kid did pick up the win. I give his match uh, 1.5. Now, here we have the next match tonight Ryback, the big guy, Ryback versus. Cesaro. Now, this match is also another of the enjoyable matches for tonight, to be honest. Because not only did we have, of course, you know, we both know 
that Cesar and Ryback are big men. And when I say big men for them, I mean they're strong and buff and stuff like that. And you can obviously tell if you watch them fight, but still. But overall, this match was back and forth up until the end. And the main thing I liked about this, not saying I don't like Ryback, well, I, well, you guys know my complaint on him being undefeated, or was by him being undefeated since he came back and stuff like that, but... Now, I'm not saying I don't like either of these men because, again, I some some people I look at more from a, this. I try to look at it on a biased point. But, yeah, Cesaro. But, but tonight on Raw was really impressive. I was kind of impressed, really impressed by this match because this is the closest anybody's came to being right back since he returned, a.k.a. Cesaro has been the closest. And, honestly, this is a style match you expect from them two being powerhouses and stuff like that. And like I said, this match was plenty of back and forth, but overall, Ryback pick up the win. And I gave this match a th and I gave this match a three star rating. Now here we have Rusev versus Heath Slater. Now, as we all know, Heath Slater is one of my favorite guys. I wish he was in the new, in the new WWE game, but he's not, sadly. But yeah, Heath Slater. I like Heath Slater. But this match wasn't really a match because. It was wit. Give me a second. I gotta fix some of my notes real quick for later. But God damn it! Hold on a minute. Fuck! 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 Where's that? Where's that? And um, by the way, I'm sorry about this. I'm just trying to fix something. I'm just trying to fix some of my notes real quick. All right. That so that way when I go through and put stuff on YouTube and stuff, I actually know too. But I'm, I'm scratching my leg now. But yeah, Rusev. He picked up the win on this. He's been undefeated for how long now? You already know my complaints on him. But it was way too obvious that Rusev was going to pick up the win. But, all I have to say is, Heath Slater was fucking awesome when he called Rusev a son of a bitch. Wish they didn't bleep it out, to be honest. I wish I actually would have kept my PG, so, but still. Overall, Rusev picked pick up the win, and besides, and from a match perspective, god dang, I keep scratching my leg because it's itching, but from a match perspective, I give this a point five rating. Simple as that. Now here we have what well, now here we have the next match. Sheamus versus Big Show. Both or not both, but two members of Team Cena being forced to face off against each other. Now when Sheamus came out and interrupted Stephanie, to be honest. I kind of figured this was going to happen, and even if one of them actually did one, which they didn't, by the way, I highly doubt either of them would have got a championship opportunity. But here's the thing: what I thought after this match, before they mentioned whole Sheamus being half, what the fuck? Is he bleeding back now? But before, there you go. Had to get myself situated. But before Sheamus was said that he wasn't going to even compete because he was at the hospital after that. I was thinking that maybe Sheamus and Show would not, Sheamus and Show would not be on the same side at, or not on the same side, but would they be on the same page at Survivor Series? And this, in a way, does show that the authority is hell bent on destroying Team Cena, because of course, as we all know, the match ended in DQ from Rusev and Henry interference, mainly to Rusev interference, but still, because Show passed out due to the accolade by Rusev, and of course Sheamus get put through the announce table by Henry via World's Strongest Slam. And at this point, though, you still kind of wondered, though, if Sheamus was going to be compete. And now we all know Sheamus is not going to be there. And I will say, the person that, repla that, that replaced Sheamus in Team Authority was actually shocking. And it really was shocking, if you ask me, even though it might have been expected. To me, I didn't expect it, though. But yeah, overall, Sheamus versus Big Show. The match in the DQ from the Sheamus and Henry interference. Overall, this match is a 2.5 tonight. And now here we have Nikki, Be Nikki Bella versus Brie Bella, or as I named it in my notes, AJ Bella, or Brie Lee, whatever you want to call this getup of Brie. Overall, this match, even if it does have such a low rating, I did still enjoy it. Only because Brie picked up to win. It wasn't really that obvious that Nikki was going to win this time around, which thank God. But yeah, I'm glad Bree picked up the win. And even after the shit that happened with Bree picking up the win, and of course AJ 
coming in and interfering with debris feud and, or not debris feud, Bella feud, stuff like that. I still think, in my personal opinion, that Brie is probably going to help AJ win all because even if she is her personal assistant for eight more days, I still feel like Brie's going to help AJ win just because after that win, yeah, something's going to happen. Overall, though, like I said, Brie Bella or AJ Bella or Brie Lee, whatever fuck you want to call Brie Bella tonight, pick, pick the win. I give this match a one, sadly. But, yeah. And here we have the main event for tonight. And this one actually was has been a better main event within the past weeks that I actually enjoyed. But the Uso, both eight-man tag match, the Usos and Los Matadores versus Stardust and Goldust and Miz and Mizdow. Now, now, there's really not much for me to talk about with this match. I, I admit I didn't take notes during this match. But WWE needs more tag teams. Now, I understand that they split up Harper and Rowans. Wish they would have done that. Wish they would have kept the Wyatt family intact. But at least now, with everything, which I'll get to it here in a minute. Yeah. They just need more tag teams, don't get me wrong. The tag teams I have, the four, I should say, the four main roster tag teams I have now, it are interesting to watch when it's not the same match const constantly, but with this, it's hard. N but with only four tag teams, it's hard not to have the same matchups constantly, if you guys know what I'm trying to say. But overall, you had the different styles in this match. It was actually pretty decent, I say. And this match actually kept my attention for the most part. But with there being any more tag teams, I just wish they would call up some of their NXT tag teams, like the Ascension's a pretty damn good tag team. I know Sin Cara and Kalisto, or whatever his name actually is, I don't follow NXT that much, we call it up. Or, I think it's Aiden English and Ezio More. I, th or whoever. I don't remember who these guys are right now, but yeah. Whatever tag team they are, but still. I just wish those of you would call up some of your NXT tag teams. At least the... The freaking... Whatever. I don't remember the name now. That's sad too, but... Yeah. The Ascension. That's who I'm thinking of. At least call them up. So that would be at least another competition tag team. But I can understand why they haven't called them up yet, but still. Overall, though, the match on a Raw tonight... Stardust and Goldust with Miz and Mizdow pick up the victory. And I give the match a four for the main event. Shocking, I know, for me, but still. Now here we have talking about everything else that happened tonight. At least some of the promos and some stuff that I wanted, wanted to touch on at least. Now, excuse me for that. But in the beginning of the night, we see... All of Authority and all of Team Authority come out. And honestly, to be honest, I have to say that Triple H and the rest of Authority are confident about Survivor Series. They are willing to destroy Team Cena. They prevailed on that somewhat, but not entirely. But hopefully, and they hope that no one by end night, no one will quote unquote sign with Cena. But hey, guess what? People did. Even though I kind of, I mean, myself, didn't want that to happen, but still. And that's just so those seeing this team really doesn't make it with Sunday. And what I even find funny, what I even proved their confidence, is that they brought up WCW, or McMahon, bringing him up with his past, being the evil ruler of WWE, and that's basically what Triple H and Stephanie are now, which I actually do agree with that. And honestly, I, I kind of like that, even if I... Even when it was the McMahon feud versus DX, I was more of DX, stuff like that, but still. But, yeah. And then, of course, you have the... And, of course, the Authority also brought up the rivalry between Ryback and Cena from about a year ago. So, yeah, overall, the Authority was confident tonight. And I can understand why. They basically destroyed so much Team Cena one night. Even though it prevailed to an extent, it didn't prevail, com prevail completely. But, even from this point, I have seen Ryback was going to be part of Team Cena, just because it seemed obvious. And yeah, that's all I really got to say. I hope I'll get more on everything later. But now here we have the Bray Wyatt, the Bray Wyatt slash Dean Ambrose promo together. And really I have nothing to say about this feud-wise. All I have to say is, 
from the way this promo went tonight and the past promos, this is going to be one of the better matches on the match card for Survivor Series. And this is when the match, and this is probably, I, I, I'm, I can't even talk right now. But I'm really, because I'm really only looking forward to two matches that's announced. Well, three. Four, actually, probably. But the pre-show, I'll get to this later. But the main two that I'm really more interested in is the Bray Wyatt, Dean Ambrose, and of course the Authority. But, yes, yeah, so I mean, I'll get to probably in my prediction video, get more onto it, but yeah. But that's really all I gotta say. Now, here we come to the next thing tonight that I want to talk about. Seven Man gave agreement to the big show that if he stepped away from Team Cena, he becomes the only active member in the Hall of Fame class of 2015. Now, here's honestly what I want to say on this, really. Not really coming from but two guys. Do you guys think Big Show belongs in the WWE Hall of Fame? I mean, yeah, he might be active. But personally, I think Big Show does belong in the Hall of Fame. I mean, I know after he retires, so things next year, along with Henry next year, he is supposed to retire, to be honest. I'm not complete, completely for sure on that. But overall, Big Show does belong in the Hall of Fame, if you ask me. He's one of those people. Probably not now, but I know sometime later in the he will. Even though, yeah. And then, of course, Stephanie Man threatened to deport Sheamus. Really, really stuff. Much I like Stephanie, deport Sheamus. I know what wasn't going to happen, but still. I just, I don't know. And, of course, all that led to the match between him, between Big Show and Sheamus. So there you go. And really, all I have left to talk about the end of the night stuff. Because here at the end of the night, we see... Honestly, if all the way throughout the night, even till this day, the authority seems confident with, the, with, with their speeches. Especially Steph... Well, really, Steph and Triple H only to talk. But for the most part, Steph. Because tri Triple H had that way of talking to him that seemed like he was nervous when he probably really wasn't. But at this point, too... I also felt like Cena seemed desperate, but at the same time, he was confident in himself no matter what happened. And I have to say that... I'll, I'll say it here in a minute after I go through everything. Sorry to give you little teasers here and there, but still. But yeah, with all that, both sides really did seem confident. There's really nothing to talk about. But well, now this is now what really surprised me is the person who replaced Sheamus. Yeah, I guess it does make sense because Luke Harper is on the team, but Eric Roman joined Team Cena and replaced Sheamus. Sheamus sent to hospital and definitely for sure is not going to be able to compete in Survivor Series. And then a core, and really, I feel like this is actually a good thing. Even though I said I wish the White family was still together as a group, but I understand not many three men tag teams or just even Harper or Roman, just them two together. But yeah, Eric Rowan as a replacement for Sheamus. I like it. I mean, I'm not going to say I hate it because I don't hate it. I'm not going to say I dislike it because I don't dislike it. I actually do kind of like it. I do want to see what Eric Rowan's as a solo competitor brings to the table to Team Cena. Even though, that, even though yeah, because Luke Harper, we saw him wrestle tonight after a while, I think. Of him not seeing him wrestle, now we got Harper. Or not Harper. Yeah, I meant Harper wrestling, but now we got Rowan on Team Cena. Well, let's see what he brings to this other thing. So, yeah. And then here we have Cesaro coming out and tricking Team Cena thing on his side, but then he turns around and goes with the authority. Now, here's what I want to know, though, with this. I know this match is supposed to be 5-on-5, five five, but here's the thing. Will it be 5-on-6 six or 6-on-5, six however you want to call it? Will Cesaro be part of the, somehow be a part of the authority team during Survivor Series? I don't know for sure. I cannot, I cannot honestly give an opinion on that because I don't know. It just seems weird to Cesaro. Unless Cesaro did that on his own accord. Because I know some superstars in the back, especially with Cesaro being supposedly punished after his rant about his own company during the backstage, but who knows anymore. But you still wonder if he did on his own accord to try to kiss up. But you never know. But as an official listing right now, for the 5v5 stuff, we have two fully joined teams for Team Authority. We have Luke Harper, Rusev, Henry, Kane, and of course your team captain, Rollins. And for Team Cena, 
We have, of course, through Captain Cena. Ziggler, shockingly, wasn't as injured as we thought. Big Show, I could still see him being there. Eric Rowan, which, which, which was a shocker and predictable, right back. Now, if I had to pick between two teams, I'm not putting either team, well, mostly I mean. Now, now here's my point. I'll probably mention this on either my Smack, probably my SmackDown and my Survivor Series predictions. But right now, I have to say it, I'm on Team Authority. Not because I don't like Cena, or at least current Cena. But to me, they have a better chance at winning. Team Authority does too at that, even if it's not scripted. Or to the outcome predetermined, I still feel like Team Authority is going to win. Because they have the best, because they have not so much Harper, I'm not going to talk about him. They have Rusev. Someone who has never been defeated since he debuted. So what does that tell you? Oh shit. I always fell back. And of course, you have Henry, you have Kane, you have Seth Rollins, and yeah, pretty much all that. But still, for most of to have Rusev, someone who's never been defeated. So here's my thing. If he's never been defeated, will he lose at Survivor Series? Everybody knows already that I'm on Team Authority side, but right now, I'm, I, they have, to me, a grave chance of winning as well. But yeah, I'm, all, I'm on Team Authority. So yeah, that's really all I gotta say. But again, I'm gonna try to give you my prediction video on Sun on Saturday. Hopefully, give you give you a walking dead video that week. Hopefully, give you my survivor my survivor series results slash review as well. Since, of course, the Walking Dead and that conflict with each other. And if you guys want to, you can like comment. On any of my videos or this video in particular subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and also down in the description of course everything you need to know my Facebook page my Twitter and also all the match ratings are also down in the description below so yeah that's about all you guys need to know until next time rockers of the rock nation live brain rock